Okay. Hey y'all, and um, welcome back to the shed. Um, today we're going to go over a few things about the system and, you know, my evolution with it all. And today I'm going to test out an air compressor. Um, I had done this before when I first got this system up and running. I was using um, basically this little Wanderer here, 30 amp charger, uh, PWM. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I most definitely melted the uh, negative battery terminal, um, output terminal, and um, things didn't go right. I had all sorts of errors, of course, and stuff like that. Um, that was my first experiment with trying to figure out what these systems are capable of. Um, since then, I've, of course, upgraded to the Rover 60 amp charger controller. And today, basically, we're going to see if we can start that compressor up. I haven't done it with this system yet. I'm hoping I don't trip any fuses, which I had in the past. Um, and I'm hoping nothing like this happens. So we'll go over a couple things and um, we'll get started. Let me show you around, okay? Okay, so this is the air compressor here. It's an old Craftsman that I bought a few years ago for I think a hundred bucks. Um, they want like almost 200 bucks for them now, which is crazy. Um, they're just a middle of the line homeowner uh, air compressor as far as I'm concerned. But it puts a bill for what I'm up to these days. Um, it is a 10 amp, um, 120 volt, which means it's drawing uh, continuous about 1200 watts. And then whatever um, it is for the startup draw, which is where we get into trouble. Now, if you look over here, we've got back in here by the Renogy Smart Shunt. I do have an inline um, ANL fuse. That's a 100 amper. And... Up here, I've got the Rover um, 60 amp controller, and then I've got the new edition um, Renogy 2000 watt inverter um, with Bluetooth connectivity. So we're gonna give this a shot. So let's go on over here to, yeah, we'll just refresh this just in case, and then click back on the smart shunt. And you can see right now, um, if I can zoom in on that, Okay, so you can see we're pulling it like a negative um, 3.26 watts and negative 0.25 amps. Um, if we kind of go over here to the uh, Renergy Core 1, you can see that we are matching up with the Renergy Core 1. So we're going to do, we're going to turn this on, we're going to hope it works, and then um, essentially <laughs> we're going to get some real-time data out of this, and this is going to be kind of fun. Okay, so... Um, Anywho, let's go ahead and see what happens since we got the camera up and rolling. We've got it plugged in right here, straight to the inverter. And let's come down over here. Let's just go ahead and click it on and see what takes place. <laughs> Oh, 
she was working hard, but she did it, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, um, it did it, and it didn't blow any fuses. We were riding the line, though. Um, the shunt was saying at one point 101 amps was being drawn through for um, a brief moment towards the end of the cycle as it was filling up. You know, the air was building up more pressure, the motor is working harder, all that good stuff. Um, the shunt also said about 1,200 watts, but when I looked at the inverter on my Renogy Core 1, it was saying it was pulling continuous at that point about 1500 watts. Um, the good news is, I think with like a soft start or some sort of a surge uh, protector, I think we're going to do okay with this. I think we're going to keep it within safe boundaries and not be so hard on the batteries and the system. Um, good news that it starts up though. And um, thanks for checking in you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, again, all of my experience are not for financial gain. They are for knowledge only. And I really do love uh, spreading knowledge and teaching people things and going over stuff um, is really what drives me in life. Um, of course, besides my beautiful family, but you know, thanks a lot, you guys catch you next time. Okay.